I was 10 years old, I started developing symptoms of joint pain and muscle aches and I couldn't stand in the shower anymore and I had awful headaches and my dad would say to me, you can't have all these things, you're not like an old man, like what's wrong with you? You may not look sick, you may be able to get through your day, but Lyme patients are incredibly sick. This is a devastating disease. I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. We had just bought our dream house I have a great job, I had two beautiful boys and a wonderful husband, and I remember laying in bed thinking, what do I have to get up for? What do I have to live for? And that scared me to my core. I mean, there were times where I'd have to hold the banisters to get up the stairs. I, I could, couldn't physically, I almost had to lift my legs, my knees, my arms. There wasn't a part of me, I would lay in bed at night and say to my husband, it's okay if I die tonight, because it's okay. Anything's got to be better than living like this. I was also worried because, and even terrified, because none of the doctors around me had any clue or even tried to figure out what was going on. And I think had it not been for Rania, I, th I feel that she, she saved my life. What's very interesting with all my patients is they all came with the same story. We are being, as I said before, we've been misdiagnosed, we've been through millions of dollar workup, we've been through tons of things and nobody can find anything. I came to you at first July of 2013 uh -huh. when I was at my worst. Right. Uh, many years before that, different symptoms, not really sure what they were. Anxiety, panic attacks, um, depression, numbness, aches and pains, fatigue. They just said, you're depressed, take some Zoloft. And that's what I did for four years and I got by. I went to allergists and a rheumatologist and my regular primary and they, you know, he was baffled by what was wrong and my hair was falling out and neurological symptoms. And I basically said to my primary, I want to go to the neurologist because I don't think a dairy allergy or a gluten allergy should make your hair fall out in clumps. I don't think I should be walking into walls. And that's when I came here and I saw your lovely symptoms list and I had almost every symptom on the oh, page. I remember that. Yeah. Every symptom checklist. Yeah, All was, of them are positive. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Well, I remember when you came, you were a basket case. I mean, you were yeah, like crying, crying, all, can't, the time, crying yeah. all the time, mm -hmm. couldn't think, couldn't function, yeah. thinking you're going to die from a mess, yeah. that that's, you're done, and with your two kids, who's going to take care of them? Yeah. And yes. that's, yeah. oh my God, the whole world is crashing on you. Yeah. And then I told you, all right, so basically, let's, um, let's see, let's do the blood test and then go from there. Yeah. And all of them had mentioned to their doctor, and that's the interesting part, could it be Lyme? And almost 99% of them would say, no, it's not Lyme. I started getting very sick. Like every six weeks I would get an infection and I was getting weaker and I, my brain function started to go very poorly. And a friend of mine had told me about you having saved her daughter's life about five years previously. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I need to go see a doctor who, who understands that there's something more beyond just mm -hmm. the regular stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that's when I came to see you. I was so sick. I'm upset that I lost. You know, it's hard to lose that many years. No, I know. It's hard to lose 20 years of your life. Yeah, it is hard. But you hear the same story almost from everybody, how much they lost from their life yeah. because they were so misdiagnosed. And they're very passionate with me because um, the same way they've been through years of misdiagnosis, testing, thinking their life is done. Given the diagnosis of MS, given the diagnosis of ALS, given the diagnosis of Parkinson, given the diagnosis of a heart disease. And I went to a noted cardiologist who said, your heart's beating funny because you're tall, you have a PDC. Drink more water, take B12, you'll be fine. They did batteries of tests and came up with lupus. I had my parents take me to every top doctor in every area of medicine. And everyone, told me that they didn't know what was wrong with me. They couldn't put a finger on it. I just went from doctor to doctor and everybody just simply said, here's your prescription, take this, you'll be okay. My pediatrician looked at me and she goes, it's all in your head. Like you're manifesting everything in your head. You need to go see a psychologist. And he said, are you depressed, Mrs. Habal? I said, I'm not depressed. I'm just very frustrated because I have all these uh, very random symptoms 
and I get treated for each one of them, but no one is actually figuring out what the matter is with me. So when all of them come and I tell them about my own journey with Lyme and my own symptoms, that's the first point that makes them take a deep breath. And they realize that I really know what I'm saying because I have it. I mean, I'm here, I'm struggling with it. I did struggle with it, I'm struggling with it, and um, I understand exactly where they're coming from. She's the only one, the only doctor out of all the doctors that I've seen that trusts what I'm feeling and that makes sense of everything that I'm saying. And I said, she's going to get me through this. It wasn't just the medicine. It wasn't just the course of treatment. It was the whole approach. And that, that for me, was worth its weight in gold. Um, Schaefer? Ace is back. Ace <laughs> are, you, are you driving back, by the way? or? Yeah, I'll leave after this. Nobody wants to be a cork just floating in the tide. You want to feel like you're steering your own ship. And I feel like I'm in the wheelhouse with the doctor. And that's, that makes it a whole lot easier to sleep at night. A whole lot easier. So in my practice, every time I get a new patient, the first uh, question they ask on the phone is, what's uh, Dr. Rifai protocol? My answer always to them is, um, Lyme is very unique to every patient. First of all, I have to always get the full history and physical of every patient. And blood pressure? 120 over 78. Oh, gee, that's great. Fantastic. Okay. I'm bringing something to the party. <laughs> How about your memory? Oh, it's, um, it's not great, <laughs> to say the least. It's actually quite bad. It's like the memory retrieval and the short-term memory and just trying to speak and about things I know very well. It's very disconcerting. Right. Um, and your focus, concentration? I have not. I have the attention span of a gnat. I'm sorry. The second thing is um, listening to the Lyme history, i.e., what's the epidemic and what's the risk factor. Because when they come here, they either had a tick bite or they live in an endemic area or they have a pet. Do you recall, like, where would you have had the first tick? A friend of mine's son graduated mm -hmm. high school and she had a barbecue in her backyard. Mm -hmm. And there's always deer out there. And that was three weeks before the first thing appeared. And then the third thing is after the physical exam is me taking the blood test. The other thing about blood test, it's only a piece in a puzzle. Lyme, okay. is, Lyme is a syndrome, it's a symptoms, it's epidemic. The most important thing is how you respond to treatment. Okay. Then you can have a really 100% answer, almost 100% do you have Lyme or not. Every time I see them, we talk over the symptoms, I explain to them where they're coming from, what's the reflection of those symptoms in terms of their disease. I tell them this is, this is based on the 20 years of experience and I have it. For example, Babesia will give them the, the symptoms of malaria. So if they have chills, fever, sweats, I tell them, okay, you have a Babesia. And if we have those uh, co-infection, they're probably causing more problem in attacking the Lyme itself. Um, and the fact that they're called co-infection, that means they feed off each other. And I have a lot of patients with Lyme. So I tell them, listen, we'll get the blood test, we'll put the whole picture, and then that will take us to the four point in, uh, fourth point in the protocol, which is, do you want to get treated or not? And if they elect to be treated, I tell them that the treatment get tailored based on their symptoms. The final answer is, really how you respond to treatment if you want me to treat you. So it depends if you want me to start today, if you're feeling so bad, or you want to wait until we get the blood test. If it will make me feel better, I'd like to start today. Okay. <laughs> okay. I live in Pennsylvania, almost on the Maryland line. I'm 300 miles away from Dr. Rafai's office. But this is where I found the best treatment. And I live in a rural community, and a lot of people have Lyme, and they go to quote-unquote Lyme specialists, and they've been treated, and they can barely get out of bed. I can't count the number of people that have stopped me and said, who'd you see? I need help. It's astonishing to me the, the treatments that they've undergone at the behest of an expert that they trust, and they're no better now than they were when they started. And I've gone through a treatment, and I feel great. It's difficult. It's difficult on my family. It's difficult on me. It's time consuming, but all I know is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that it's all worth it in the end. I didn't know when can I walk again? When can I run again? I loved to run. I would run every day. Like, how would I get around? But now I can sit here and say that every single day I get up and I take a run. I go to the gym. I play tennis. Um, 
I was one of the top singles players at my tennis team this year. I'm better than I was, but I'm not done yet. I still have a ways to go. And I'm one of the lucky ones because I found a doctor that can do that for me. There are people out there that will be on this path for years and will probably put many of them in a grave. I'm lucky that I've managed to get off that track, but it's time that the medical community wakes up to this. And to anyone who says that chronic Lyme doesn't exist, I would say you're crazy. And I'm not crazy for thinking it exists because here I am and I'm healthy. I mean, my kids and my husband will say, that every day they thank Dr. Rania. I get up every morning and the first thing is, thank you, Dr. Rania, I feel great, and I go on with my life.